Today's video is a review of an OFX plugin called Dehancer. Now, Dehancer is a powerful film emulation tool for creating a, a cine like look to your digital video and stills. Um, for full disclosure here, uh, Dehancer have given me a free license for using the plugin in return for this review. Um, that said, they don't have any influence on what I say and they did stipulate I was free to give a full and honest opinion. Now ultimately, they feel that by giving an honest review, this helps them learn and it helps them develop their uh, software. Uh, Dehance is available uh, for both video and stills. Uh, for example, today we're going to be working in DaVinci Resolve, but it's available in to plug, as a plugin for uh, Adobe Premiere, After Effects, Final Cut, and along with photo plugins for Lightroom, Photoshop, Capture One and uh, Affinity Photo. And there's also an iOS app as well. So this is primarily a review with a basic overview of my workflow and it's coupled with some before and after uh, examples as, as I run through it. Why have Dehancer in the first place? Well, you know, digital itself is, is quite a clinical um, medium. And if you like that cine look, then uh, Dehancer is, uh, is, is good at creating that look and it creates it quite simply. Obviously for most of us using film, while we can use easily use um, still film, it's, it's, it's available and it's easy to use and it's still relatively cheap. If you were to use um, moving footage, then um, no, that, that's, fairly expensive. So that, that's one side of it. And, and to put it simply, if you like the cinematic look of film stock, then Dehancer might be of interest. The plugin itself, it, it offers over 60 film stock emulations and it covers Kodak, Fuji, Agfa and, and numerous uh, other uh, film stocks. Now, also using Dehancer means that even if you're not particularly experienced um, at colour grading, you can still fairly easily achieve that cine look without having to be fully versed in, in DaVinci itself. Okay, so let's just jump straight into the program. So we have Dehancer Pro here. To get into Dehancer Pro normally, um, if you're working just in your nodes here, you just click on FX Effects and then you scroll down and, and then you find the button. Now, what Dehancer recommends is you make all your base adjustments first and then you put Dehancer in at the end. Uh, that's with the exception of sharpening, you would put your sharpening in after Dehancer. And if you have any major changes to do early on, then obviously save those changes and then work, uh, work in Dehancer. So uh, what I'm going to do here, you can pop Dehancer straight over the top of your colour space as it were, but I don't do that, I do it this way. And I can see everything separately. So we're now in Dehancer and you can see if I just switch it on and off. There you go, you can see the difference. So it's already made a major change. And, and then uh, considering that we're working in uh, Kodak Vision 3 250D. Um, what I will do, however, I'm going to switch off everything and then we'll just run through and you can see how the image is built up, how the video is. Uh, built on the, these changes. So we've got everything off there, everything switched off. Uh, as you'll notice at the top here, the the source video is Rec 709. Depending on what you're using, you can either run through here and use one of these, or you can choose your camera. So for example, if you were working Apple, RE, uh, Canon, Blackmagic Design, uh, Fujifilm, RED, um, Sigma, you know, the, 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 there's a choice of a lot of, of cameras in there um, and then you would choose them and, and and choose those as your main source. However, for me, I'm just going to stick with Rec. 709. So the next thing we've got here is exposure compensation. Um, again, fairly self-explanatory, I think, for most people. So you could just make any tweaks you want there. If you want to reset anything, just go to the right hand side and reset. So we'll just tweak that up a little bit. Um, we're going to add defringe on here because it's quite the, uh, the para glider is it's got a lot of, of um, white around him. So we don't want any fringing against the clouds particularly. 
Okay, so moving down, uh, film developer. Well, this is a bit where you can boost your contrast a little bit and make a few more little tweaks if you wish. I'm not going to really do anything there. And then we're into the film. So we've got Kodak Vision. I'll just enable it and you'll see immediately that we jump into um, that sort of cinematic look. We've got here D for daylight. Uh, we've got Kodak Vision 3, which you can use as a tungsten film. Kodak Portra. So there's lots and lots in just the Kodak alone. But as you work your way down, there's Konica, Lumachrome, uh, Rolly. That there's you know a great deal of of, of film emulation here. Uh, one of my favourites here, Ilford HP5. Um, love that for black and white work. It, it's something from my uh, youth using. Um, HP5. There's Fuji Color, uh, again a range of uh, Fuji Color um, superior, of course, a lot of people will, will probably remember from their film days. So, as we work our way back up, I, I think generally the Zagfa uh, a fairly good look, but you've you can just work about an experiment if you want. But what we're going to stick with today is the Kodak 250. Kodak Vision 250, so we're going for this look today. So I'm just going to look down now, so we've got film compression, I'm going to pop that on. As you can see there, there's quite a quite a difference. Uh, next thing is, let's run down and check out the uh, black points, or you can by the way, if you want to push and pull the film, then you can, you can make some changes here. Again, I'm just leaving them as they are. Uh, black point settings, <clears throat> there's enable them first before you do anything <laughs> you can make changes here again i don't think i need to make uh, many adjustments in that area so again i'll leave it uh, print we're in linear at the moment if you were going to be printing out then kodak endura glossy paper for example then if you now enable that you can just see the changes that that makes uh, again um i don't need to use that at the moment um I'm just going to work in linear. <clears throat> so working our way down, colour head, uh, fairly self-explanatory. Any changes you make here, so for example, you change the blues or whatever. Um, again, um, not going to make any changes. Rather than move these three independently, if you were going to make any changes, then sometimes just gang them. So this is puts the three together, and then you can you can make global adjustments. <clears throat> Again, no need for it for me at the moment with this. Uh, shadow tones. Um, again, we can warm it up or cool it down. I'm not going to do any of that. Uh, highlights and midtones. Same, same thing. Um, again, it's it's personal taste when we're doing things like this. I am just going to give that a little tweak there. I think I, I like I like it about there. Highlights. Just going to make it just slightly I don't want to go too far with this yeah I don't I don't want to spoil the look too much because we've already got we're already somewhere near anywhere now film grain uh, at the moment it's 35 millimeter ISO 250 you can make changes in here so I'm just going to pop this on now and enable it and you can immediately see this some film grain in the sky um, you've got a range of, of uh, film grains on four films. So we've got your 8mm ISO 500. You can see just how grainy that has become now. I'm going to go back to uh, 35mm ISO 250. So we've, we've got grain, but we haven't got too much. We haven't gone over the top. And if you want, you can customise this. So we can go down to the sizing and you can make the grain size smaller. Uh, you can increase the amount and um, th there's lots of adjustments you can make here um, I'm just going to work on the settings that we've got here um, I might just take it down a little bit I don't want it too much just take it down to about there um, then you've got film type positives and negative well if you look at the negative you've got quite a bit of green there and positive well I quite like this look so I'm going with that um, Further down, so we now we're down to halation, um, which is a 
an aspect of, of film where you get a, a fringing of, of sort of orangey red. Um, you can put that on. Um, it, it's a again, it's a very much personal taste um, whether you want to leave that on or not. Because we're working on a scar with lots of white around it, I'm not going to use that in this particular um, video. So I'm going to go down to Bloom. Well, I'm going to enable that Bloom creates if you look if i just switch it on and off it just makes them whites nice and soft and it, it works really well again it's adjustable you can do it custom uh, or super eight whichever you choose i'm going to leave that as the default as it comes now um film damage film breath well as we know film damage is the damage that you would see on on old films film breath is where you see the uh, sometimes see the colours or the exposure pulse in. Um, again, I don't want that on this. I don't particularly want to have that. Um, gate weave is where the video itself, sorry, the film itself, as it runs through the gate, sort of wobbles a little bit. Um, again, it's all adjustable. You can do what you want. Uh, vignette, self-explanatory, I suppose, if you want to add a vignette. Uh, monitor, you can... Uh, Look at the clipping on your thing. There won't be any clipping on this for me um, at all. False colour, um, yeah, you can you can uh, you can use that again for me. No need uh, for that. Output. Um, this is your the output here. This is the total impact that all the changes that we've made here have had. So this is the original here, and then if you just work this up, you can see how the impact of the changes are that I've made. Um, my whole intention is to make this quite a soft. Um, soft look you know something like you would might see in these sort of films in the sort of 80s or whatever so we've got that and then you can go down we've got a LUT generator so if you want to save this as a LUT you can um, and then you've got the options at the end for your quality whether it's normal fast or, or high slow so high quality slow uh, normal is fast I'm just going to leave that as normal um, and then you've got your your data behind everything so your licensing for what you profiles and things so that's all the adjustments i'm going to make um, i'm quite happy with those and as you'll see in a second this is is the final result well i hope you found that review useful from my perspective I find the plugin very easy to use and it does definitely help with my my workflow are there any negatives well there are a couple the the, the first one is price at, at 449 dollars i think it's quite expensive but that said if you do enjoy using the plug-in and, and it uh, it works with your workflow and you like the cinematic filmic look that this plug-in creates or helps you create then it, it's probably worth it um, the second thing is that it's the the, the plug-in is quite intensive it's quite heavy on your PC and mine does sometimes slow down a bit um, and it, it's definitely working a little bit harder when I use this this plugin. That said, I do know that Dehancer is working on making it less intensive on the on the PC. So, um, so that's only a, a, a sort of minor negative in a way. Now, talking about the price at four hundred and forty nine dollars for a lifetime license, if you use a code, which I'm going to pop up in a second, if you use that code. Uh, you can get a 10% discount at checkout. Uh, so I'll pop it up. I'll pop it up on the screen here and I'll also pop it in the description. So anyway, that's it. I hope you've found this useful. Uh, if you have, please do give me a like and a subscribe. It helps the channel, as you probably know. And uh, until the next time, we'll see you later.